into materials and me materials being the study of stuff and me being eerie okay the topic for today <laughs> hydrogen embrisement i have to delete that anyways yeah so hydrogen embrisement it sounds like a big word i was going to say it's nothing to be intimidated by but it's kind of deep because let me first explain what it is um if you guys know already if you or you you guys don't know already i'm actually on my year in industry so i'm not a student at the moment i'm actually a worker a nine to five worker anyways um so one of the things i'm working on is hydrogen embrittlement and obviously i didn't know about it before placements so i come on to placement and they're like oh yeah you're gonna be working on xyz um and so they, ex they gave me like an overview but i had to do a bit of like learning and research to sort of like understand it um and so i feel like i can give an a basic <laughs> explanation on what hydrogen embrittlement is in metals so hydrogen embrittlement can happen in different materials but what i'm learning about and what i'm working on is to do with metals so what basically happens is that you have your hydrogen molecule it dissociates it splits that's a big word for it splits up into two hydrogen atoms and then it goes onto the surface of the metal and then you know it's absorbed and then diffuses into the structure and depending on if there are already existing cracks it basically makes it worse um and so you end up having um a reduction in ductility hence why it's called hydrogen embrittlement i think with many things that you know there's a lot of research over time but with this phenomenon in particular um it seems like many different people had discovered it at different points in times so they gave it different names at different points in time and then obviously now us looking at it now it's sort of like wait this is the same thing so sometimes it's been used interchangeably with like hydrogen induced cracking or uh hydrogen assisted cracking or um what's the other name now why does it matter like who cares whether or not stuff are becoming brittle well in case you haven't noticed um global warming climate change a lot of things are going on greta still hasn't gone back to school and the bad guy in this movie is um crude oil <laughs> that's the bad guy and everybody's trying to move away from fossil fuels and um hydrogen is one of the big contenders for a new fuel fuel to use in you know aerospace automotive that kind of thing um but then the problem is a lot of these things they've got a lot of metal and they've got a lot of metal and they want to use hydrogen but guess what hydrogen embrittlement <laughs> so the problem has been identified now the thing is, okay, we need to understand how this thing works. So now there's, okay, fine, hydrogen embrittlement is a thing, but then everybody's still trying to understand like the different mechanisms by which hydrogen embrittlement can occur, um, what materials are more vulnerable to hydrogen embrittlement. Um, and like, there's just a lot of like learning and, standardization that needs to be like discovered and organized and put in place um and so it's kind of an exciting thing to be learning about even with those mechanisms they knew like they're still learning and so it's just like oh my gosh like this is like on the ground sort of like stuff that like is fresh basically um and so i just thought i would share with you guys i don't know a food for thought if you can call it um and i just find it really interesting because it's like oh they've already like we already know like what materials are good in high temperature applications um which ones are corrosion resistant and all that but it's like when you're trying to factor in you know like um what things that are susceptible to hydrogen embrittlement it switches the game basically so like the things you would normally have in you know aerospace applications it's like we we might not be able to use that like um for example like something like nickel 
um especially like okay nickel super eyelids using this for high temperature applications doesn't do very well in hydrogen and it's like okay but like we just found these things out like and now it's then sort of like doing a lot of testing to figure out what metals you can then use that will not totally like crumble in the presence of hydrogen but then aren't completely pathetic for everything else and i don't know i just think that's really interesting but yeah no hydrogen embrittlement if you do know about it get to know another thing i wanted to mention those of you still looking for placements my company just released the what's it called like the adverts for the materials and manufacturing engineering internship role so the role i'm in right now um i'll put the link to like the description of it in the description of this video so i hope you apply um if you're still looking for one i didn't really give you guys much info about the company i work in on my last video i didn't say the name or anything so yeah i work at reaction engines they're an aerospace company and they like specialize in like you know heat exchangers um that's their that's their claim to fame it's in column science center that's where it, there's a bunch of other you know like companies on site the uka is there if you don't know what the uka is then you're not cool there's hybrid working what else do we do yeah we have every other friday off there's hot chocolate um this is me trying to sell it um no 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 but jokes aside like it's actually great um i've learned like a lot obviously like it's a working environment so there's a certain level of decorum required but good vibes it's really good vibes and good work as well the recruitment process let's get into that so it wasn't there wasn't anything too crazy it's the normal process um i think i i don't think i put in a, a cover letter i just uploaded my cv and then i think within like a couple a month let me say a month they got back to me and then asked if i was available for an interview i did the, we had the interview on teams um it's not just sort of like generic um interview questions of like you know you portraying your skills and stuff it's there was, it was also a technical side of it so i guess just be mindful of that um but like it's nothing too crazy like i think i don't know if you know a bit about materials you should be fine yeah you should be fine um and it's not a test like i got like i remember getting something wrong that they asked me in one of the questions and i think it's more about like seeing like, how your mind works and to see how you think as you're trying to solve a problem basically um and it also helps obviously to check out the company's websites their values um what they're about and also sort of i guess formulate some questions for them like maybe there's certain benefits you are hoping for or certain things you wanted to learn that's something to ask them hopefully if you get to the interview stage so i hope this puts a smile on your face if you thought there were no more placements out there reaction engines has a spot for you potentially if you apply and they want you um so yeah if you haven't found a placement yet there's definitely still some companies that haven't released their stuff yet or are just about to so don't stop applying don't stop applying don't stop applying it's not over till it's over so definitely keep applying um i also another thing i wanted to mention um i think you should also consider location um obviously i'm commuting from london to cullum and that's kind of far like i'm okay i'm okay yeah <sighs> okay but it's definitely something to consider like if you're prepared to do it because it's, it's very easy to just be like oh yeah, yeah, yeah i can commute but like the reality of it is like it depending on how long it is it does eat up a lot of your time so depending on what commitments you have or just i don't know just even just for your normal day-to-day -day life like how much time are you willing 
of how much of your your own time are you willing to sacrifice basically if you think you can't commute over an hour um then move closer like that's definitely something you should consider um if you can afford it and if your parents like allow that um so yeah all the best um and yeah i hope you guys all get the placements you want if you made it to this point in the video good on you good on me let's keep doing this